Data security is a hot button issue online and on Capitol Hill. In recent months, companies like Apple, Google, and Facebook have all come under fire for the ways they use and distribute users' personal information. But it is not just our data we need to be concerned about. A recent article published in the Journal of Legal Analysis reveals the intricate methods some companies use to woo consumers into purchasing their products. CBS News's Irina Ivanova explores how websites use dark patterns to manipulate you. In her latest article, she explains why this manipulation is so effective. And Irina joins me now. She's Associate Managing Editor for CBS Money Watch. Irina, welcome. So your article explores the way websites use these dark patterns in order to manipulate its users. Can you explain what a dark pattern is exactly and how it's used online? So anyone who's been online, uh, used an app, or played a game in the past decade has likely encountered this, but we may not have realized it or even known what to call it. Uh, but dark patterns uh, are designs that are not straightforward. It's a design that tries to manipulate the user into making the choice that the company wants them to make. And these tactics run the gamut. Um, it can be anything from using different colors and font sizes to emphasize one option and de-emphasize is another option. Uh, it can be hiding terms and conditions or hiding information like the true cost of something, um, making it very easy to sign up for a service, but then very hard to cancel it once you've signed up. Um, on shopping sites, we often see countdown timers that say, you know, this offer is only available for the next 30 minutes, and then it actually counts down the minutes for you. Uh, or you could see a pop-up that says 120 people in your city bought this shirt recently that you're looking at. Um, so these are all examples of dark patterns, and these are widespread tactics that companies use to get us to buy the thing, sign up for their email list, and give up some more of our data. And you found how uh, they can be incredibly successful at what they're trying to do, which is, in essence, manipulate your behavior. I thought the one that, to me, always gets me when I'm online is the one that asks you, click here if you want your, your uh, you know, um, information to be safe, or click here if you don't care about internet safety and don't want this product, right? It's sort of like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's so That's manipulative. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that one is particularly successful, you say, in getting people to sign up for those uh, products. It absolutely is, and and uh, the the name the researchers came up for this, um, which was new to me, is confirm shaming, uh, where the, you know the user, in order to decline a service, um, has to click on you know a, a statement that they don't agree with or a statement that makes them feel stupid or, or feel ashamed. Um, <laughs> And that, that is uh, that is uh, as annoying as it is, it's actually a pretty effective method, according to uh, a recent study out um, from two academics at the University of Chicago. Well, that's why it's a, you know you came to the conclusion that these companies relentlessly pester you without worrying that they're going to turn you off because for some reason, this doesn't seem to be alienating customers. Why is that? You know, this was very surprising to me, and I think to a lot of people, conventional wisdom tells us that you can only annoy people so much uh, before they ditch your product or your website and go elsewhere. Um, but in, in the study um, by uh, Lior Strahilovitz and Jamie Liguri at U of Chicago, they tested a number of these dark patterns, um, including uh, making users click through several screens in order to decline a service uh, and hiding important information. Um, and they found, uh, you know, the people who saw the manipulative designs at the end of, of the study, they weren't more angry than the people who saw straightforward designs. Um, you know, they didn't realize they had been manipulated. They didn't leave angry comments in the comment box. Um, in fact, many of them didn't even know that they had signed up to receive a product. Um, so it is, it is extremely and what effective. About, mm -hmm. And what about the cost of a product? Does that have impact on the way consumers react to purchasing it through these, you know, these dark manipulations. 
You would think that it should, uh, you know, because, again, we have this narrative that we're, we're savvy consumers, we make decisions based on price. But in this study, it turned out cost basically made no difference. Uh, one of the experiments they did was to offer a data protection plan uh, for $12 a month. And in another experiment, it was uh, $39 a month, um, which is a terrible deal. You know, that is very expensive. It's far more expensive uh, than what commercial data protection services actually cost. Um, and they found out that the price didn't really matter. Uh, what determined whether or not people accepted uh, the service was not how much it cost, but how much manipulative design people were exposed to uh, when they were told, you know, you've been put in this data protection plan, accept it or not. Right. Well, I have to tell you, I find all of this extremely annoying, as I thought that most people did. I, I have to say, it doesn't really work for me. I don't buy a lot of these products online, but I have noticed that it's proliferating. Like, th these, these dark patterns are coming up more and more often. Did the study also find that? Um, you know, it didn't, uh, this particular study didn't quantify um, how widespread these are, you know, in the wild. Um, there has been other research that shows, uh, as, as you've noted, you know, it's basically everywhere. Um, you know, there's, yeah. there's not just the pop-ups that say, click here if you don't care about your data. You know, there's, there's all kinds of tactics. Right. Um, and, and, if you look at the results here, you know, it shows you why it kind of makes sense from a business point of view. You know, just add a few different right. pop-up screens and you could basically double your sales. They're not going anywhere. You know? That's right. As long as they work, they're not going anywhere. Well, Irina Ivanova, thank you so much for joining us uh, and letting us know that we were not being annoyed. We, we, weren't making, we weren't imagining it, that they were actually being targeted. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Sonia.